Hello. Okay, where we left off, we um, we just finished drawing this all out. We figured out what the co what the force of friction is. We figured out the force of this block. We, well, that was kind of given to us, and we figured out what the force of gravity is pulling along the ramp. So now what we just did was we um, we figured out okay, each of these arrows are pointing in one direction. Each of these arrows, basically, these are pointing negative. These are going in the negative direction. They're pulling backwards. This one's going forwards along the ramp and then our little XY coordinate system. So these two are negative forces. This one's a positive force. So negative, negative, positive. And that is going to be equal to that stupid little E thing. That big uh, E sigma, whatever whatever the, the, the symbol is, the sum of all the forces. Right? That's going to be the um, final force that we end up with that's being exerted on that uh, a block. Um, uh, text, text, text. Okay, um, so then what do we do? Well, well, let's just plug in the values that we have. For our F of FB, well, our force of the block, that's just the 32 newtons, right? I'm not going to put in the newtons. But, oh, wait, no, that's negative 32 newtons, right? because it's, pu it's pulling downwards, it's pulling backwards, right? Yeah, okay. Negative 32 newtons, and then minus the force of friction, which we just figured out. Force of friction is the coefficient times the normal force. Uh, we ended up getting 23.0 for that, so I'm just going to put 23 in, even though I, I should put the decimal in, I'm not going to. And then we add to it the force in the x direction. That's the amount that gravity is pulling it down the ramp. And that we figured out is 78.1. So, 78.1. That's equal to the sum of the forces. Okay, well, let's, let's just do this. Um, actually, we can probably do this right here. Well, what's 32 and 23? I mean, these are both negatives, so we can kind of combine these. So we have negative 55, right, because 32 and 23. So negative 55 plus 78.1. Uh, and that we can kind of do. What's it's just 78, the same as saying 78.1 minus 55, right? So that's going to be equal to. Uh, trust me on this one. 21, 23.1. Is that right? Uh, it looks right. So I'm just going to go with it. So 23.1 is our final force. So I'm going to put that all in. Um, let's make it pink. So now we've got our final force here, and our final force is going in this direction. Notice it's positive. That's why I paid attention to signs so much. It's positive. That's important. So it's accelerating in this direction um, at this 23.1 and that's in... Er, not accelerating. I'm sorry. That's the force. And that's in newtons. How do we figure out the acceleration? Well, what is the most important formula in physics? Or, well, one of the key formulas. F equals ma. That's a that's a big one. So we know the force, right? So our force is equal to 23.1, uh, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. What's the mass? Well, we know that the weight of it is 102 newtons. So how do you get the weight of something when you have the mass? Well, we just multiplied that mass times the acceleration of gravity, that 9.8, right? So, it's like, for example, when we had a 10 kilogram mass, we said that that was um, 98 pounds, 9.8 times 10, right? Okay, so here, we have the force, and we know this is, this is a different uh, force and a different acceleration, but this right here, this is the force of, acceler this is the force of um, gravity pulling it down. So if you divide that by 9.8, you get the uh, you get the mass. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So if you divide the one 102 di divided by the 9.8, the amount that gravity is pulling down, you get 10.4, um, and that's the that's the mass of our uh, our block A. So we get 23.1 is equal to what do we say? 10.4? 10.4 times the acceleration. 
And mm -hmm. now, pretty simple algebra problem. I mean, 23.1 divided by this 10.4 is going to be the acceleration. So A equals um, 23.1 divided by 10.4 equals, so we get 2.22. 2.22, and that's in meters per second per second, right? Because that's uh, that's our that's acceleration. That's our units of acceleration, or meters per second squared, if you want to say it like that. By the way, on the test, write in meters per second squared. Otherwise, you'll get points off. Even though in general it's easier to say meters per second per second, <laughs> write meters per second squared, obviously. So that's our acceleration if it's going down the ramp. And what would be different if it was initially going up the ramp? Well, the only thing that would really change is that now the force of friction, since this is going up the ramp, instead of the force of friction helping out this B block, force of friction is going to be pointing that way, right? It's going to be pointing downwards, down the ramp, because um, it's going to be trying to keep the ramp uh, keep the box from moving up the ramp. Because, like in this case, it's keep it's tr the force of friction is working to prevent the box from sliding down, whereas if the box was already moving up, the uh, force of friction would be trying to sl would be trying to stop it. It'd be trying to sl keep it from going up the ramp. Hopefully that all made sense. Um, I hope I gave you some sort of idea as to how to approach the extra credit problems. Um, how to begin working towards them, or at least that particular one. Um, let's see, what were the other ones? One of them had some, oh, one of them was just, um, these, uh, the two block problem. And this seems kind of like a challenge, like, uh, like it's kind of difficult, but I'm fairly confident that you guys can do it. I'm doing, I'm making an arrow with a square tool. How about that? Uh, the second one should be relatively easy because uh, basically this, all it is is that now the normal force is kind of in this direction. So basically you figure out how hard you have to push in order for the acceleration of this in this direction. Basically you have to, fig you have to make the, gra the gravitational force balance out um, with the frictional force. And the frictional force depends upon um, that coefficient of friction which they give us and how hard you're pushing, right? Because the pushing is the normal force. That's the important thing to know um, just for that problem is that the normal force is this right here. It's how hard you're pushing. Because you, this is perpendicular right there. And then the friction kind of follow, and then you multiply that normal force times the f times the force of friction, or rather we know that the force of friction is going to be whatever the weight of this object is, right? Because it has to resist that weight. So it's the force of friction, or you could just say the weight of the object, divided by um, that coefficient of friction is what's going to give us this final, uh, that this normal force, or the uh, initial force that we had here. And then the last um, extra credit problem, the last challenge question was, um, I don't remember. Oh, it was like if you have a, uh, if you've got a ramp and you're pushing a block up it, you're pushing, or you're rather you're pushing a block horizontally, um, how far will it go? Basically, there's two steps to this question. First, just use your basic Newton's laws and the kind of stuff that we covered up here. Use that to figure out what what this is this ex this acceleration is. Remember, if if it starts moving up this way, then you're using your kinetic friction, and the friction if it's moving up this way, the friction is going to be acting in the opposite direction, so the friction is going to be down the ramp, and then that right there gives um what was I saying? Oh right. So then you can use kind of the laws that we talked about in this video, in the past two videos. You can use them to figure out what its acceleration is. And then, guess what? Okay. So 
you know that it has to... You want to find out how far it travels, right? You want to find out x. You just solve for the acceleration. You know that it's starting out at, their example is 4.0 um, meters per second. That's its initial velocity. And they're saying that you want to know how far it goes. So when you think about it, it's kind of like once it reaches the top, when it reaches the very top of the ramp, that's, when, that's right about when it's about to slide down. So that's when it equals zero. Right? I hope that makes sense, because if you kind of slide something up a ramp, right before it slides back down, it's not moving. It, it has to reach zero at some point. So look, you have three out of four. You can solve for the fourth one. You just use that those uh, kinematics equations. The uh, the one that you use in this case happens to be hmm. Let's see. Um, okay, this, you use the, uh, the kind of confusing one. You can use the vs squared equals vi squared um, plus two ax. Plug in some numbers and you're done. So the, the main thing is solving for this A, but you'll see that you do still need to un understand and know these, uh, these kinematics equations. So I'm actually glad I made those videos. Um, hopefully that helped. Hopefully, um, more, even more importantly than the challenge questions, because I mean those are only like three points or whatever. Um, I think it's a really good example problem that should help you just hopefully understand the general approach to these problems and what's actually going on, how to go about looking at the forces because that's what you really need to understand for the test. Um, but hopefully, hope, hope that helps. Um, the next thing that I'm about to do is I'm probably going to do another uh, trust analysis video. So um, I'll see you then.